Hi guys, Steve Girardi here. Welcome to Steve Strings. Today I have a build for you and uh, this is kind of a unique build. Uh, you may know I live down here in South Central Texas where it's pretty hot and I go through a lot of popsicles. <laughs> and uh, I was looking at this box one day and of course being a cigar box luthier I thought this thing has potential and I checked and I said you know this thing has some resonance to it and so I thought I want to turn this into a ukulele and I did this was made from very very few pieces of found objects plainly it came from a popsicle box it also came from uh, one stick which was an engineer's stake and uh, there's some laminate here in the headstock and that came from inside of a cigar box and then just some hardware so I'll uh, show you kind of how I put this together so these are the building materials for my next build this is going to be a popsicle box ukulele this should be fun to get this box ready, what I've done is I've cut off the lid and I've glued it on the underside of where the bridge is going to go just to stiffen it a bit because I'm afraid the pressure may just sort of make it want to collapse. And then I added these little strips of quarter inch plywood that are just glued in with tight bond um, to the underside of what will be the soundboard so that when I put the neck through uh, the box, I can screw it uh, through that wood into the neck so that it will be held securely. I figured the cardboard would not really be able to prevent any screws from being torn out. So that's the one little reinforcement I've done in order to, uh, to make this work. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this neck ready to get cut. Uh, you can see that right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off what will become the fretboard. So that's an eight and a half inch long fretboard. Uh, and then I have marked off, this is going to be the headstock. Uh, this is going to, this uh, end line here is going to be the end of the fretboard. And I'm going to have a zero fret. So that line is indicate where the zero fret is going to go. Um, and then the fretboard is going to, so the fretboard is going to end right here. Um, and then this is where the box is going to be. And that will be the tailpiece sticking out of the end of the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. And you can see that this here is kind of a pretty coarse uh, piece of wood. You can see the, the cut marks in it from the blade. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand that a bit so to make sure I get a good, good glue up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those to size. I'll go ahead and put the frets in the fretboard and glue it up. Okay, I finished doing the cutting I need to do. So you can see here I cut off the end of the stake. I then uh, drilled in four holes here for what will be the, the tuning machines. And I drilled in four holes back here for what is going to be where I'll be putting the strings through the tailpiece. And this piece here I cut off and that's going to be the fretboard which is going right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and sand these. You can see it's got some, some rough saw marks in there. So I'm going to go ahead and clean those up and make sure they're... Uh, there's no dirt between them so that the glue will bond well when I glue this to the fretboard. I should say that this is a half inch thick piece of wood and so that means uh, there at, at the neck is going to be a total of an inch through there and of course the headstock is going to be a half inch. I might thin that down a little more when I do the sanding of it. I'm going to round off uh, the, the corners here. And that's really uh, it. Well, I've got the fretboard glued on. I need to go ahead and notch it yet. But you can see as I was uh, getting ready to get this thing together, I got ahead of myself. And when I uh, pre-drilled the holes for the tuning machines, you can see I gr drilled them on the wrong side of the headstock. So I'm going to be putting a piece of veneer on that to uh, camouflage that screw up. And hopefully that'll make it look nice as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue that on and uh, cut the slots of my fretboard and get ready to assemble this. Alrighty, so I've uh, progressed here a bit. What I've done here is I've marked out where I'm going to cut the frets. I got my fret saw there and square. Uh, these popsicle sticks are going to become my bridge. And here you can see that I 
use this uh, card scraper as a call in order to uh, make sure that the the um, veneer that I put on here is going to be nice and flat. So there we go. Okay, so now I just need to go ahead and uh, punch those holes through and go ahead and trim up the veneer to make sure it's nice and clean and we'll be ready to roll. Alright, so I just finished uh, cutting the fret slots into the fretboard and now I'm going to go ahead and shape the neck. To shape the neck, I'm going to be using a few different files. One is a Shinto rasp, which I really like. And then a couple of other just assorted files to shape it. And then I'll finish it off with various sandpapers and things. Alrighty, I finished the neck. As you can see here, I have uh, finished fretting it. And I finished uh, putting the holes through that veneer I had to put on there to cover up my mistake. You can see here I've shaped the neck and sanded those parts that are going to be visible. The unsanded stuff that will be inside the box. Alrighty, I've got all the frets put in now. I set them in and I put a drop of super glue in each end. And then let that kind of run in along the tang to hold it in place. I then went ahead and smoothed and uh, dressed the edges. So the next thing you do is to use linseed oil and treat this neck. So I've gone ahead and finished putting linseed oil on it. And I let it soak in for a bit and then I came back and put another coat on. And that should probably be good enough again. It's just to seal it and protect it. So now we can go ahead and attach it to the box. As you can see, I finished uh, assembling this popsicle box ukulele. Let's go ahead and go over it. Let's start uh, with the headstock. So you can see here on the headstock that I did put that mint, that veneer of mahogany on there to cover up the mistake I made of drilling the holes on the wrong side of the neck. Uh, you can also see that I have a string spacer here where I just use two eye screws and a nail and that is so that I can get the appropriate uh, break angle coming off of this, uh, this uh, zero fret. And you can see I do not have a nut, so to keep these strings in alignment, uh, what I did was I just uh, cut little notches into the end of the fretboard, and they serve as the string spacer. You may also note that these two center strings they wind to the inside of the tuning machines, whereas these two outer strings wind to the outside of the tuning machines here. And that was so that I could keep the strings essentially in straight alignment. Uh, since I wasn't using a, a proper nut, I didn't want to have some, some uh, stress kind of pushing against the, the string spacer there. Uh, I want to just help to keep with the alignment. Uh, again, you can see here I used a jumbo fret uh, for the zero fret and just medium uh, frets here uh, for the regular frets. And again, shout out to CB Giddy because uh, that's where I got the, the fret wire from. Again, this, uh, this neck uh, has uh, basically just two layers of that uh, surveyor's stake that I had. So basically that fretboard is a half an inch thick. And the neck was a half an inch thick, which I kind of uh, uh, carved down to get a, a shape that I, I kind of liked. So again, this uh, stick just went through the box, through a hole I cut there, and it was then screwed into the box uh, here at the, um, at, the, or at the box, and then down here at the tailpiece. Speaking of the tailpiece, you can see that this was a, a through body design. You can see the neck going all the way through the body. And so I drilled four holes here in the tailpiece. And you can see that I put little beads uh, on the strings so that they would not pull through those holes. I was concerned that these strings might uh, cut into the cardboard box. And so I tried to address that by gluing a popsicle stick here um, on the end of the box so the strings are rubbing against wood rather than rubbing against just the box. 
You can also see here that this uh, floating bridge or saddle, whatever, um, is made from five popsicle sticks. What I did was I just laminated four sticks together, and you can probably see the, the layering there on the center, center line. And then on the bottom of it, I put uh, one popsicle stick. Originally, I had made a taller one, and I realized it was too tall. The action was way too high, and so I remade it, and this worked out just well. Uh, let's look at the inside of the box and, and talk about some issues going on there. Okay, so inside the box here, you can see that the only reinforcement or bracing I did on the soundboard was to just take what had been sort of the, the opening lid to the box here, and I just glued that on the inside to kind of stiffen that back. Um, in retrospect, I probably would have gotten some better support if I'd used popsicle sticks as fan braces in there. You may also note that I do have a an input jack, uh, and I did try to electrify this, and you can see the jack here, and you can see that I glued the piezo in there. Unfortunately, you might or might not be able to see that the porcelain on that piezo actually cracked as I was, uh, I tuned it up and was playing it and I heard something go crack and that porcelain broke. And I think that's because as I was soldering it, I'm not a very good solderer, so as, a, as I was soldering it, I think I just overheated it, which made it fragile and, and there was a crack in it. So this is not electric, this is just acoustic. And again, this uh, probably sounds best acoustically uh, for, the, for the player because the sound comes from that hole in the box. But this tuned up just fine. Again, this is on a 15 inch scale. So this is a concert scale popsicle box ukulele. Uh, this was a lot of fun to make. <laughs> you should try this. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see how it sounds. I'm not sure how it's come out of the camera. The sound, of course, mostly comes out of here. And plainly, given that this is cardboard, it ends up absorbing some of the sound. But uh, this is a playable instrument. I'm laughing because this is so silly, this is fun. So there you go. If you uh, think you'd like to try making a, not a cigar box ukulele, but a popsicle box ukulele, it's doable. This was really a proof of concept and I had no idea how this would turn out, but it turned out. Now, what the lifespan of this will be, I don't know. Because of the pressure of the strings, will this box eventually collapse? I don't know. I thought about that, and I thought if I were doing this again, I would probably put the, the bracing inside the lid of the box to sort of help, uh, help support the soundboard. I also thought potentially I could put some bracing here in the side, again, to hold the soundboard up. But again, this is a proof of concept. And like I said, I go through enough popsicles um, if this box collapsed, I could just put a new box on <laughs> because, uh, you know, because the, the, the neck is the hardest part of the whole thing, and that's built. And so if I wanted to swap this out for another popsicle box, I could. If I say, you know what, I want to turn this into a proper, or I should say into a more durable cigar box ukulele, I could take this box off and put a cigar box on because this is a 10-inch box. I could just put a 10-inch cigar box on there. 
Uh, for those of you who are wondering what the string action is like, the string action is a little high on here still. It's probably uh, three millimeters, uh, maybe a hair over that. Um, so I could probably sand down this uh, saddle a bit to bring that down. But the intonation is right on because this is a floating bridge. And so I can adjust that bridge uh, to put it in the right place. And if I need to, I can just sort of file uh, or the, uh, the angle on the saddle to get the, the angle that I want. But there you have it. This is a popsicle box ukulele. Proof of concept done. You should definitely give this a try. It was a blast to do. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I hope you're already subscribing. If you're not, please subscribe uh, if you'd like to see more instruments like this. If you've made instruments, whether they be ukuleles or guitars, out of found objects, uh, I would love to hear your experience. Please leave a link below to maybe some instruments that you've built to share with the other folks who are watching this video. Thanks for watching.